Now that we have our configuration set up, we're going to begin building out our login endpoint. And where we're going to place this is in our server slash API slash op directory inside of a wildcard file. And we're just going to actually copy and paste the suggested code from Sidebase Nuxsoft. Um, can I find where it's corresponding? Let's see here. Did I spell something wrong? Side base, next off. No. And let us just run. Now I'm going to bring in our application just for easy reference. And actually what I want to show you is this. So this is our endpoint that we're going to be working with. And here we're bringing in our providers. And so this is an array of all of the particular providers that you can see here is being brought in from next auth. So if we say, let's say next auth providers, we can actually go to their documentation and see Look at this long list. These are all potential providers that NextAuth, which also works with NuxtAuth, allows for. And so we're going to be doing GitHub just because they're nice and easy. And what it recommends we do is, or what it requires, is we need our client ID and our client secret. And so where do we get these? Um, let's see, right here, github.com, OAuth apps, and let's just create a new OAuth app, and we're going to call this Nuxt Auth Tutorial um, OAuth. And for our homepage URL, we'll do localhost, and our callback, we're actually going to do this right here, localhost 3000 slash API slash auth slash callback slash github. And so what that is connecting to is this. By having the square brackets here, it allows for wildcards. In this case, it's going to be callback github. Now we're going to register our application and we're going to get our client ID. So let's go back in, fill in our client ID. And now we're going to generate a client secret. Let me just verify it's me and we're going to paste it here. I just want to say one thing though, is this isn't production ready. In fact, I would, I would not, I will not put this code, these variables into source control. In fact, it's better to use something like Nux.js's runtime config to hide these variables in a local end file so you don't have to display it in source control. Now that we have this all set up, we're going to move on to our next video. See you there.